I'm Lee Brown, and y'all know this by now, but this is crazy shit in real estate, and you're getting to meet one of my new friends, Sean Pinkson, over here, and we found out, like, within 25 seconds of meeting each other, that we are mama hen twins, and we like <laughs> bossing people around, but it's because we get shit done, and we just expect other people to as well, and if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to your podcast, if you want to see the paint, you need to come over to YouTube because we're now doing video. I'm copying some of my favorite podcasts. I have discussed that the best ones are on video and frankly we are the best so I know y'all want to look at us so come on over to YouTube if you're one of our new viewers hey there's three and a half years worth of episodes on your iTunes podcast so go listen to them have a good time you want more of the love fest more of the good stuff more of life lessons entrepreneur knowledge how to raise your kids I mean we got it all right here subscribe to the YouTube channel for more subscribe to the podcast this is Sean Pinkston. We met in November at the National Association of Realtors annual conference. And it's always funny to me that there's realtors who go to events that have 25,000 people at them. This one was a little smaller. We were a little under 20 because San Francisco was not everybody's prime destination because it's expensive. But you have people that go and they take 1,000 business cards and they're spraying them around and they don't know who anybody is and they don't really have conversations. And my goal whenever I'm around an event is how do I catch up with like five people and have a real conversation? And Sean, I met after one of my classes, primarily because she had her young son with her. And by young, I mean like younger than us. He's like not 12 or anything, but right. she, she had him there to find out about real estate. Now this is an unlicensed young man who's got big giant academic dreams and he's super smart. And I know y'all don't think much of realtors, but we're very smart. And so I was, maybe calling his name out about 14 times in the next class, encouraging him to get his license. Yes. And then all the other people in the event were starting to pile on yes. to him too. We're like, yes, baby, yes. get your license. That Cause your license, wonderful. get your license. Yes, that was amazing. That and was so amazing. that's where we met. And so then we've had Instagram since then. And then Sean was just telling me, as y'all heard in the pre-show here about an event that she's put on to reach millennials, which is always funny because in real estate, we talk about reaching other generations, but our generation, because we are the Gen Xers, we're lost. Nobody cares about us. We're not boomers or millennials. We're just <laughs> secret people. And that's we actually are pretty good at connecting to other people because that's how we grew up, you know, hanging out in the mall where we had to go make friends and stuff. So Sean, tell them more about yourself, where you're located, how long you've been doing real estate, what should they know about you? Well, so again, Sean Pinkston, everybody calls me Pink. Hi, Pink. Um, earrings um, too, don't forget the earrings. Don't forget the earrings, you know, I had to do it. Um, Chicago, Illinois, South Side in the Ashburn community is where I live. I've been a realtor since uh, 2004, actually. I'm from Milwaukee originally. My husband was oh. from Chicago, yeah, so... I'm going to make it brief. He just came over there and swooped me up. And that's the way I'm going to tell it. Because I like the way he tells it better. It sounds all fairy tale-ish and stuff. So I don't want to muck that up. Um, and frankly, the, just the reason I even got into real estate was because when we moved here to get our first property, we buy our first property in our early 30s. Um, the realtor then changed something on the offer without our permission. And the only way I found out, we found out is because my husband's on the fire department. He's a captain on the fire department. He knew another love, right? He yes, knew, big love. Big love. He knew the firefighter on the other end, but our realtor just didn't know that because he was also a firefighter. And he goes, hey, why'd you change this offer? He's, I didn't change an offer. So long story short, we ended up finding out, contacted our realtor and she never answered. She knew what we were calling about, apparently never answered. We didn't know what to do at that point. I think I wrote her brokerage or something and heard nothing back and just kind of left it at that. Needless to say, I said, I'm going to start real estate because I want to get in this business to help people and not let this happen to anybody because there's no reason we should have lost the house that we had accepted, ready to go a week or two before closing. And we hear this. My so, blood pressure is through the roof right now. What did they change in the paperwork? I think she asked for some more money, asked for more money or something like that. I can't remember what it was. It wasn't her money. It wasn't even her money. I don't even understand. At that time, I didn't understand. Today's time, I probably would say trying to get a higher commission. But back then, we had no idea why you were changing numbers. Why would you do that at all? We're already accepted. We're ready to go. I mean, when you're a realtor, you're operating in a fiduciary capacity. You owe 
loyalty and obedience and skill, care, and diligence to your clients. And none of that involves sneaky, shady paperwork stuff. At all, at all. So I have vowed ever since then to be the best fiduciary operator for my clients. And I have done that to a T all soon to be 17 years of my career in real estate. Okay. So, you know, I have to ask, is that person still in real estate or are they gone? You know what? I don't even remember their name and I haven't even been bothered by the thought of them any further because they're not worth my energy or my time. So I just keep it moving. See, that's why you're sweeter than I am, because I would be stalking them, turning them into the board and commission and fighting them. <laughs> I a bet. But I mean, we can also be super optimistic because that's how I live my life because I'm in the glass overflowing. And I would say that if you hadn't had a bad experience, we might not have you in the space, which Absolutely. means I wouldn't have gotten to meet your son to uh, aggravate his nerves because I think he'll wind up getting his license, even if he never uses it. It's so, it's so good to have it. But he will. He will. He decided to go to school first, so he's, this is his first I year at university. He's smart. He'll be fine. Yeah. He decided to do that first. When he gets done, he wants to go ahead and be a millennial in real estate. He's already referred me two of his millennial friends from school. So, Well, too bad he didn't get his license. He could have had a fee, but we won't tell him I that. I told yet. him that. No, I did tell him that. I said, well, you just would have went on ahead and got your license. But I'm glad, though, in a sense, because I later found out that in our local association, we have a, um, a scholarship where veterans can actually take classes and don't have to pay for it. Oh, I love that. Is that yeah, you, the Chicago Realtors or you Main Street? I'm both actually, but this is through Chicago Realtors. I'm both though. Uh, you I'm have so many great leaders in the Chicago Association we of Realtors. Do. Oh, we absolutely do. We absolutely do. We got great leaders in both of those organizations. I know both of them. So it's, it's amazing to be a part of it. Like Nikea and we've got Carrie Little, who I think is one of the... Carrie's one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. I know, life. right? I know, right? And then she, she brings her twin sister around just to mess time. with us. Yeah, and they're so cute. Bless their heart. <laughs> and then Marky has more energy than a, a thousand oh, people put together. <laughs> oh, and of course, we're drawn to strong women because that's how we roll. So anyway, that's it. That's it. you do work with investors. Do you work with primary residents as well? Or are you very specific in your business? Because at 17 years, you do get to make that choice sometimes. Absolutely. So starting out, I kind of worked with short sales starting out um, before anybody even knew what short sales were exactly. So like, it was great business. Excellent business. And so when no one knew about it, the flow was just yours. Okay. Then once the crash happened, I was surfing the waves, baby, because I knew exactly what to do while everybody was scrambling to take classes and figure out what to do. I was surfing the waves, helping those people get out of those unfortunate situations into better situations and help them rebuild. So that was my whole whole MO back then started a company called foreclosure executives and it was just a rotating process for everyone. Um, so that didn't last long though, because back then when I formed that team, the broker I was under kind of didn't understand the concept of teams. It wasn't so prevalent as it is today. Right. So, you know, I guess they were thinking maybe I was trying to start a business under their business. I don't know. So to save the relationship and everything, I just dissolved the business, but I kept doing what I was doing because it helped people. It absolutely exactly. Helped. And, you yeah. know, that was very rarely part of the discussion. If you remember during the Great Recession when short sales and foreclosures were the hot topic, you had a lot of realtors doing it begrudgingly. They didn't want to. They were exactly. mad about it because it's it. hard work. It's blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Because they totally lost sight of the fact that for some people that was the best solution. And our job yeah. is not always to find the easiest solution. It's to find the best solution. That's right. That's right. And, and you must have said helping people that. five times in describing that era. Absolutely. That was what it was all about because people were just distraught. They didn't know what to do. And then put on top of that, they don't even know what's happening. What is a foreclosure? A lot of people got into purchasing that foreclosure tidbit that's in the mortgage document. That wasn't explained at the closing. So <laughs> in recapture, I think realtors didn't explain that very well because that's coming up frequently now, the whole recapture piece. And it's going to be yep. an ongoing discussion, but that's why professional realtors continually educate themselves and they stay ahead of curves and they stay with the curves. And I'm sure that exactly. you have the same conversations I have because I'm always wondering what's going to happen next. Next time it won't be short sales. It'll be deed and lieu. Yeah, and so because go. deed and lieu is going to be the big thing, my team and I, that's what we're working on now is what do we need to know? Because yeah. if it's next year, well, then that's next year. If it's two years from now, then it's two years from now. It's just cyclical stuff. Can't be scared yeah. of it. There you go. And with the deed in lieu too, just to bring up that point with a short sale, if you're working on a short sale for somebody and they all of a sudden decide to do a deed in lieu and they don't tell you, um, you're kind of doing work for nothing. Cause once that deed in lieu is enacted, 
the short sale process stops. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know that. But that's a smaller piece of the market right now because luckily we are still in a relatively strong market depending on where you are oh, inventory yeah. wise and all those pieces. So you have made a really specific choice to focus on our upcoming generation of home buyers, the millennials. So share with our listeners the, well, I mean, the craziest part of being in that space is obviously the generational challenges. I'm sure you're like me, your kids tell you things and you have to Google it. I was Googling last night what we were watching that show on Netflix, The Circle, which is awful, but I need to watch what my kids are watching. So I'm Googling Urban Dictionary. I'm like, ooh, what? what? <laughs> so, and, and we're young. We're not like our parents. Right, right, right. But we still need to know. We still don't know a lot of things to do now. So what's your focus in helping millennials besides the fact that it's a, a segment of the market that is available? What's your approach? And tell us more about why. So um, I, I kind of like what your your speaker that you had on. I'm not sure when you guys recorded, but I just listened to your podcast this morning. As a matter of fact, Erin B. She was talking about finances, and she was she was amazing. She was talking about a book that she had read, and that it basically said, "Do what you got to do right now because you know somebody else may do it for you, but you got to get out there and do it on your own." There it is. Pursuing I have her book right here, her Pursuing book. Freedom. That's her book. I was like, I'm going to Audible and get that book because she was on fire. I rewound. Oh, I have a spare copy. I'll send this to you. Oh, black. there's your love. There's your love. So when she was talking about that, I was like, she's absolutely right. That's my target right there. That the reason is because they're used to having things done for themselves. You got to get out here and do it for yourself. Because one of my favorite quotes basically indicated, um, and I don't know who the guy is. Um, I wish I would have pulled it up. I don't know who he is, but I'm going to quote it anyway. We can be knowledgeable with other man's knowledge, but we cannot be wise with another man's wisdom. And that kind of put that in perspective with what she said, like, you can do it for them all day long, but they're not getting wise and experience right. to be able to handle and sustain themselves. So that's ultimately the goal with me working with millennials, teaching them the way to do this from beginning to end, avoiding those pitfalls that I fell into or ran through like unscrupulous realtors or whatever have you, so that you can get to the end faster and get to the win. You get to the end and get to the win. All right, so you're deciding to reach millennials also in the way that they like to be reached, which is not necessarily one-on-one because -on -one, they were raised on Absolutely. group projects and team projects in school. They're very accustomed to doing things in a group and you've found some really big success already and it's just the beginning wave of it. Absolutely. We just had our first uh, Millennials Investing in Real Estate event on January 25th this past Saturday. Um, I don't know if they heard this in the pre-show, but I'm going to say it again anyway. We expected 20 people, almost 40 people showed up, and we had to keep bringing chairs into the room because these millennials want this information. And it wasn't just millennials. We had some older level of millennials in the class, too, that wanted some information, but it was amazing. And so to that point, the overwhelming response was so huge that we're having another one February 29th, leap year. So they got to leap into action and start registering for that. But only the ones who are in that first class can register first because they get priority registration because they can oh, like that. One. Absolutely. So I'll let them fill up those seats first and then I'll open it up to the public. So you should probably also let people know that the key to your success is that you're not the and no offense, if you have somebody's going to get their feelings hurt, probably I'll always do, but this and is not Carlton care. Sheet style investing. This is no, not late night no, TV infomercial. This is Sean Pinkston, your new educator, mama in real estate is going to give you the straight scoop and then people can make their own choices. That's but there's right. a difference in the realtors who tell people what to do and the ones who share with them how it can be done and show them what to do. You're absolutely right about that. So the, the, the benefit to that with them working with the oldest millennial realtor in real estate is what I like to call myself. Is my husband, I love it. <laughs> my husband and I have been investing in real estate for over 17 years as well. Um, he's a general contractor since he's a firefighter. He can kind of do that on That's the side. That's kind of handy. It is. Or as he says, if he's a general contractor, he does firefighting on the side. I don't know. But we are actually showing them by what we've actually gone through and knowing what we know. We know the financing products for renovating. We know, you know, the ins and outs of purchasing and of course, on the spot estimates. When we go and look with the millennials, my first millennials of the year that I closed with, when we took them, my husband came with us. So when you have that inspection period, they already knew the costs, the roundabout costs of what it took to get that property together. And they were able to make the best offer that they could make. And they won out of maybe they won that bid out of maybe 30 plus bidders. 
because, because they had me, you they had experience with a knowledgeable investing millennial realtor who happened to be married to a contractor that's kind of a nice inside <laughs> lane there Sean. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's a blessing, though. It's a blessing to really have those tools available for them so that, like you said, you relate in another way, in a different way. And when we're going out and we're, we're giving them that information, they know they don't have to use my husband, but that information is very crucial and beneficial up front. They know that. But if they don't and the house catches on fire, then we can't answer for it. We can't answer for it, Just kidding. But, I'm just kidding, people. Look, Somebody's going to take me seriously. Look, I'm going to say it. <laughs> So my, we look, my brother's a firefighter. He will tell you all day long there are houses he wish he could let burn, but he won't because he's a <laughs> firefighter, but he wishes. <laughs> Say let it burn. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Okay, so that's like the businessy stuff that you're doing. And I just I I just love the branding style that you have and your energy comes through everything that you do. And in the 17 years since you've been a realtor, you're you started in a crazy shit kind of an angle, but what have you seen since you've been a realtor that was, I, I, I can't believe, I just, I cannot believe this just happened and you had to get home and tell your husband, you're like, I know that you see a lot, but you never going to believe this. What's the, the story? Wow. Which one should I give you? Good I know, me. right? <laughs> There's so many. A lot of people think this is just all fluff and roses, but it's You're so just cool. dressing up and driving around, Sean. Mm. You're getting paid for that. Look how cute okay, you are. Okay, at least. Somebody told me you just like to get cute dressed up and drive around. I do like it. That ain't the point, but that's not all I do. <laughs> Obviously, when you get into real estate, yeah. you have this mental picture of what it's going to look like. And you say, you know what? I know it's not like TV and I know it's not like the movies, but it won't be like my experience. And you go through pre-licensing and you start working with buyers and sellers and you run into a situation and you're like, did, did this really just happen? Whether it's with a client, with somebody else's client, with legislation. I mean, we've seen some crazy legislative and regulatory things that have happened in real estate world. I mean, I got in 20 years ago. You weren't far behind me. We did not have a 20 page contract then. I had a four page contract in North Carolina when I got in. My dad loves telling people he remembers the days of the one page contract. That's his favorite thing to tell people. But oh, we see amazing. these things change over time. So yeah. Yeah. you look back and what, what's, what's surprising to you? And it, sometimes it's a survival thing or it's, it can be a sweet moment too. I, I think ultimately getting into, when I first got into short sales, when I first got into real estate, not knowing that, and I'll be double-sided, not knowing that some of the homes were in the condition that they were in and people right. actually were living there and they had just moved out so often they would tear up the homes as well. And I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with it now, but being a new realtor, it was shocking to see a home in a particular condition and you as the realtor, you got to walk through that book. You got to get through there. You got to take some pictures. You got to do whatever you have to do. So I learned how to do BPOs, broker price opinions, and all of those things to actually get the value so that, you know, whether it's a short sale or a bank owned property, that we could get that property sold. But it was sometimes some of the hardest days I had just going into the properties. Fast forward to today, it's like seeing it in the back of my head. It's like going with the wind. But that's something that took me a hard time to get over and understand this is what I got to do as a realtor. So that's a, a, probably a thing I would let new investors know. Don't let something on the front surface fool you from a perfect gem and, uh, you know, a diamond in a rug. So oh, that's it. It's absolutely true. And you think about it before you're in real estate, before you invest, you think that a nasty house has not been vacuumed and the countertops are dirty. The toilets maybe need to be cleaned. Right, and then right. you go into an actual nasty house and you're like, yeah, somebody lives yeah. here and it's okay to them. Yeah. And that's when, exactly. you know, we've seen some mental illness in the Ooh. form of how people care for houses or don't care for houses. Right. Our job is not to judge. Our job is to figure out a solution, but it is, it's, it's shocking. It's daunting. It's very daunting and, and it's sad and it really does pull on your strings because in my instance, it makes me want to help more in, in that regard. You know what I mean? And not necessarily that individual who's, who's, who was there, but just help people know that, you know, you, you've got beauty right here in the face of you. And that's the positive from an unfortunate situation. It's See, that's what happens when you're the oldest millennial who's cheerful and positive and pink. That's it. That's it. And I'm hey, happy to have that. <laughs> I found our quote because, you know, that's why we have the Googles, Michelle de Montagne. We can be knowledgeable with another man's knowledge, but we can't be wise with another man's wisdom. 
thank you, thank you, you brainyquote.com. Yes, I love it. Because we like to crush things out immediately. Absolutely, and give people their credit. Thank you, Michelle, for that, because that's one of the quotes that has stuck with me for so long. And it just, when 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 I listened to Erin, I said, oh my God, that's exactly it. That's what I'm talking That's exactly it. They're not going to learn just by you teaching them in a class or a workshop. That's just the beginning. You got to show them how to do it. Might be a... Uh... I don't know how you could do it. I guess it depends on what inventory you have, but to take them on a field trip through a house. That's coming up. We've got four workshops. You are like right on my trail. That's why we sister hands. We got four workshops. This is the first of four, right? The first one is the novice workshop. That's where you learn about the ins and outs. I had the attorney there. I had the lender there. I had the uh, inspector there. I had the insurance rep there. You had your husband there? Yeah, of course, he was the contractor. Okay. Yeah, he was there. He was co-hosting with me. And then we had a guy, Rob Rose, the executive director from Cook County Land Bank there, so that once we get onto those property sites and start clicking on properties, we're actually going to start looking at those properties. Absolutely. Then we're going to do a workshop where they're going to learn how to actually start uh putting in applications for those properties and then start to bid on those properties. So they're basically getting their hand held like this through these entire processes. So that second process is going to be the sale because we are going to get under contract and it's going to get sold. The first one, right, is after the sale. What do you do now that you've sold? And then the last workshop is going to be focused on the next purchase. So we're taking them through the circle of buying and becoming avid investors perpetually. Oh, you're awesome. Amazing. All right, people. I know y'all are as excited about her as you see why we connected immediately in November. So all of Sean's information is in the show notes for this episode. All the living clickable links will be everywhere. I'm not even going to ask for the tell y'all because y'all don't write anything down, but that's fine because you can click on it. <laughs> Obviously, you're going to look up Pink and you will find her on Instagram. She's pretty easy to find. She's on Facebook and she can help your millennials or non-millennial investors anywhere in the Chicagoland area. And if she can't help them, she will know somebody who can. But I can't promise that her husband will stay available because you know how contractors are. You know, they play favorites and they'll probably <laughs> just pick and choose. Oh, but you know. Love guess- this girl. Oh. <laughs> you'll have to have another fireman friend who can step in when he's over busy but Sean I'm so excited for your success and if you would please tell your son that his other mother says hello and expects to hear about that license when he finishes it this summer and I appreciate you so much for coming on the show and for sharing your story thank you for having me Lee I really appreciate it but if you go look up that original agent who sold you your house and they are still in the business you need to file a complaint you know what I'm gonna follow that sister here <laughs> if we don't police ourselves who will you're right you absolutely are. we let realtors get away with too much nowadays so you're absolutely right they need to have people like you who will not mess with them you will share the wisdom <laughs> hey, can we do the et thing what it worked <laughs> all right guys if you want to show up on the podcast and i know that you do send me a note at lee brown on twitter if you like the political dumpster fire if you like the happy on instagram facebook or here on youtube and make sure you subscribe. Give me five stars because that makes me happy. And I'll see you next time. Gotcha. Love you. Bye.